The Baltic Dry Index, a measure of global trade, is at its lowest ever, while the Bloomberg Commodity Index hit a 16-year low this week. Saxo's Ola Hansen on what's behind the slump. Well, the theme that we're seeing at the moment is the one that's been playing out now for several months. We've got a market where, which is oversupplied, primarily driven by the, uh, by the Chinese economy, which is uh, changing its mix. It's, it's, re it's demanding less of the dirty commodities like cement, steel and, and uh, iron ore, and asking for more of, the, of gasoline, zinc and aluminium towards the uh, consumer-driven economy. It's having a negative impact on the Baltic Dry Index, which is the uh, which is an index uh, in reflecting the shipment of many of these uh, heavy commodities around the world, especially towards China. But also, if you look at the overall uh, commodity index, it is at a 16-year low. It is driven by by general weakness across the board. And as long as we we see a global growth, which is not really uh, kicking uh, kicking up uh, or kicking into gear, especially in the, in, in emerging markets. We'll, we'll need to see a response from producers. So far, we're not really seeing it. If you look at oil markets, production is high. U.S. oil producers are suffering, but we're still seeing uh, production levels fairly, fairly stable for, for the past few, uh, few weeks. And that's not helping the, uh, the near-term outlook. Ola believes that while crude is looking oversupplied, it's also looking increasingly oversold. Well, we've seen this past uh, past week that uh, most of the news has been generally priced negative. A lot of talk about all, all oversupply, and we've seen that now for a while. But we've seen December contract, uh, which is expires uh, this Friday, has, uh, has has found support around the 40 area. We're seeing the uh, January contract finding support down towards the 41 area. It does indicate that we, we've probably seen most of the selling for now uh, because it, it continues to be presented with bad news but it's not really falling any further. So just in the near term, it could indicate the market is, uh, is oversold. We obviously got a very important OPEC meeting coming up in the beginning of December with the OPEC uh, basket price having fallen below $40 for the first time since 2009. It may obviously add for, uh, could add to the, uh, the potential tension at that meeting and who knows, we may see a surprise even though I think it's, it's probably still early at the, too early at this stage. We did also see one of the major investment banks come out with uh, reiterating their call for, for a worst case scenario of oil hitting $20. That's obviously based on the, uh, on the fact that we continue to see global inventories rise. And if we, if we do get a mild winter, which is the, the current outlook, we can see this here in, in Europe, but also in the, in the US, that the temperatures are above seasonal normal. If that continues for the next few months, the demand for heating oil will be low and obviously that will help, that will increase uh, inventories even further and that's the near-term risk in the market. Gold hit a new five-year low this week with a focus on both the dollar and the Federal Reserve. But Ola is looking for consolidation. While oil is very much focusing on oversupply, the gold market is focusing on the FOMC meeting coming up in December. The market's now been talking about a rate hike for intensively for the past uh, four to five weeks. During this time, we've seen quite a major sell-off uh, in, in both uh, silver and gold. And I think we, this past week where we had some FOMC minutes, uh, meet, uh, minutes out, highlighting the increased uh, likelihood of a rate hike, we didn't really see any follow-through selling in these metals. We actually see the market stabilize and bounce a little bit. I think that, that tells me that at this level, the, all the talk about rate hikes is fully priced into the market, so that just leaves the near-term risk a little bit more skewed to the upside. So I think we'll see the market stabilize. Gold, how far can it go? Well, 1100, 1105, it's a big area of resistance. Before the FOMC meeting, I would be surprised to see it move much higher than that. You also have to consider the, uh, the outlook for the dollar. The dollar has been one of the key drivers. If you look in the chart here, you can see how the, uh, why the uh, while the euro dollar has been going back down again, i.e. the dollar has been going up, we've seen gold uh, fall, fall as well. So there's still a very close link between the two. And that obviously uh, leaves December a very, very interesting month. We got the ECB meeting at the beginning of December. We got the FOMC meeting in the middle of December. Both of these uh, could uh, basically drive the dollar higher. That obviously is, is in the near term negative for, for gold.